So I'm looking forward to having this conversation today about African-Americans um, and mental health. A lot in our culture think that you can just pray things away. And I, I believe in prayer, no doubt, but I also understand that not one miracle in the Bible occurred without the person needing the miracle taking action. What's difficult sometimes is probably reflecting on being a community member who may feel like you've lost your role and you need help reconnecting. We are such a strong, resilient people. Um, and sometimes because of that, we have this, or oftentimes I think, there's this stoicism about us and it's like we're not allowed to be upset, not allowed to have depression or anxiety. So I'm excited to sit down with my brother, with my sister, talk about uh, mental health in our black community. <laughs> Let's make it happen. Go ahead first. Well, 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 Dr. Logan, why, why don't why don't you start out with that, if you don't mind? <laughs> okay. So my why, <laughs> I mean, and I, you know, when it comes to mental health in the Black African American community, I'm reminded of um, a healthy cultural mistrust. <laughs> We historically, uh, black and brown people have not trusted mental health sure. and medical fields and have had good reason to have had very good reason yeah. to. And we can think about, you know, slavery and, and how people were treated, how, you know, the idea that we don't feel any pain. So I yeah. think just the visual of us, <laughs> the visual of people who look like um, those African-American community um, who represent that community, it releases some of that stigma automatically. And we have just never been given permission to not be right. stoic right. and to not just be like, it doesn't bother us. Our men have it, right. our women have it, our children have it. And it, it, I do think that it is hurting us, it's killing us. Um, so being able to have some permission, and I think with permission comes words. Like there's so many people I've worked with that don't know how to put words to what's happening and words right. are so powerful and, and we can heal through that. So that's a huge part of my, of my why. Shahid, you want to go next, brother Shahid? You want to go ahead? I appreciate the invitation, Pastor. As, as you said earlier, uh, Dr. Logan, um, there, there, there is a mistrust there because there is equally mm -hmm. so a mistreatment, right? That's either driven by racism um, and the mistreatment, misdiagnosing, and the incarceration of you know folks who are copper, black people of color, whatever it is that they would coin us as. Um, in any time frame, um, our mental health is usually leveraged against us. To really be the basis of the science and laws that existed to enslave us. Right. Um, you know, it was considered a disorder to want to be free, to yes. run, yes. to flee, all those things. Um, it was it, it was a disorder to, to not to not want to be anything other than what you know a, a white slave master wanted you to be. Yeah. And that's the genesis right. of this industry. And yeah. go figure with that, that genesis, we don't account for all the hurts, the pains, the everything that's inhumane that, that's gone into this. And mind you, what I'm saying isn't isn't like, you know, that's the way it is for, for, for everyone. It's just my reflection. Such wonderful uh, answers to that question. Um, I guess for me, guys, it's uh, I'm, I'm coming from a, 
a, a Christian point of view, because I'm a pastor of a church, but I'm going to tell you the mistake that our people make. They think that you can just pray mental illness away. You can't. <laughs> you, you can't. There's no indication you just pray something away. Um, if, if we study the Bible, if we study the life of Christ, who I'm a believer, I'm a Christ follower, um, there's always some action that had to take place before the healing and before the miracle. But when, when Brother Shaheed said that it was viewed as a mental illness to want yeah. to be free, right? Yeah. Mm. So so if I flip that, let me ask you a question now. Like, cause I, is, <laughs> is it a mental illness? Do you guys think it's, it's part of a mental illness to want to be accepted by them in yeah. the worst way? Because I mm. never really have. And, and, but, but because I didn't, I was always unruly. I was always, they called me unruly. They called me angry. And so with all of that and in raising black males in my family mm. and now my, my grandkids are going through that, my, they have this desire to, to be accepted by this culture, by this people that really don't, they really, they, if you can't dribble a basketball or catch a football or sing or dance, they're not really worried about your intellectual properties and, and how intelligent you can be. But bro, Shahi, when you said that, man, that it was considered a mental illness to want to be free, they still think there's something wrong with that. Mm. Pastor Graves, if I may, uh, I even pose the question, you know, is it crazy to, to want to stay or, or be a part? And I go one above that and that I think it's colonial. Yeah. Yeah. When we think racism and its effects um, and its dehumanizing effects and so on, racism is still a tool. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know what I mean? There, there's a whole shed in which that tool has come <laughs> from. And I feel it's colonization, right. you know, and colonization yeah. is it, it doesn't look good, feel good. And it's it's inhumane for any that are the, 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 the perpetrators of it. For those who uh, wind up experiencing it um, as as victims or whatever the case may be, it distracts us. I feel, or I believe, from from acknowledging that you know it can't heal the pain that it's caused. It's going to take us returning to a certain way of actually being with each other. Uh, something that again that, that was said by, by you, Doctor Logan, was this idea of per permission. Uh, imagine us being from cultures that heavily relied upon being seen, being brought into life, being given permission. And then when you fundamentally deprive people of that really crucial and critical cultural value, spiritual value, they're lost. Yeah. yeah. The word that comes to mind is um, validation. And um it's important for us to give ourselves permission um, to try to find what our words are, <laughs> to mm -hmm. name what's happening, yeah. um, because it happens all the time and we're told it's not real. And it is mm -hmm. real. We don't need that validation, I think. For, for me, I get a chance to watch people heal together. And that's because we don't brush things under the rug. If a brother or sister are struggling in any area, Let's talk about it. Let's deal with it. Let's try to point you in the right direction. I just think that our healing, our mental healing is not something that can be done alone. All of these things that we're talking about, we've never talked about before. And that's what's celebratory mm -hmm. about this conversation mm -hmm. is that now we can be better parents. We can be better grandparents. We can be better aunts and uncles. We can, we can say, wait a minute, they need this conversation right now. Because I remember hmm. when I needed it and it wasn't available. And so that I think that's the beginning part of, of us really recognizing the village is going to have to take part of it. You're going to you have to be in a community of people to really help us get to that place to where we are dealing with our mental illness and are becoming mentally healthy as we're in as we're walking this journey and in this journey of life. So 